Hey guys, Jay here. Welcome to Models Memories Weekly, episode 59. Models Memories is a show about nothing and is filmed in front of a live studio audience. This is a show where I talk about my painting, modeling, and working experiences from the week. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Jay, you put out three YouTube videos a week and you stream every single night. How? Could you possibly have more to say? Well, I do. And here goes. This week, we finally got the reveal of what is gonna be going on at Warhammer Fest, and it's pretty darn cool, and I did not see it coming, but in hindsight, I totally should have saw it coming because Games Workshop recently showed off the new cover art of the new Chaos Space Marine Codex, and it's magnificent. This cover is inspired. It's so cool. Very similarly to the Gene Stealer Cult Codex, it's just a beautiful, artistic, grim, dark representation of 40K, which I super hope this is the direction that they're moving in from now on, because codexes for a while now have been fine. Like this one. This is this is the Necron Codex. I think this is 8th edition or 7th edition. Eh, it's a Necron. It's a little bit stylized, but it doesn't really... It doesn't really sell you on the whole world. It's a little cartoony. It's... It's all shades of all rights, but some of the new Codex covers are amazing. They look, they super duper harken back to some of the old school, like super grim dark illustrations that you'd get inside of like fourth edition, fifth edition Codexes. Even though back then 40K wasn't any more or less grim dark than it is now, you would get these amazing black and white artworks that super duper showed how grim and dark everything was. And I love these new Codexes. I hope. That going forward, this is the new way that they do it. They pay artists to make super amazing works of art that don't really show off the models that exist, but they give you the essence of what 40K is. And I definitely think that that is important. Even if you can't technically buy that Chaos Lord on the cover of that rule book, it might give you some ideas for fodder on how to kit bash the models that you have into something that feels like that. Oh, it's just, it's just a good piece of art. The blue light reflecting off of their armor with that giant red glow in the background. Ah, it is so cool. Knowing that Chaos Space Marines were right around the corner definitely should have given me a little bit of an idea of what was coming, but I was blindsided when I saw the new Chaos Space Marine models revealed. I watched the Games Workshop reveals live and it was kind of fun. They, they, you know, they love to chit chat and to kind of string you along because they got to stretch it out into a proper show. I understand they could have shown off all of the minis in about 30 seconds and then been like this, 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 bye, which, uh, which maybe I would have preferred. But I do get that the way that they do it is a little bit more fun. But holy cow, the new chaos models. I have never been a huge chaos fan. I've painted some chaos space marines. I have a Night Lord's kill team but I've never really wanted to jump into the deep end of chaos. But some of these new models, the new Possessed. Possessed, it's great that Possessed are getting a new kit because if you look at the current Possessed models in Games Workshop, they are laughable. They look like, they look like Happy Meal Kids toys from the 90s. They are silly. And these new models are glorious. Ah, oh, they're so cool. Each one is unique and has its own chaos affliction going on. They're beautifully sculpted, beautifully posed. A couple of cool tactical rocks here and there. One of them is just standing on a dead space marine, which is great. Oh, these models are so sick and would make for a really, really fun painting challenge. There's models a little bit like this already for 30K. I forget what they're called, but the way that they painted them where they have red armor and then like fleshy black, fleshy black like chaos bits. I think that would be a really, really good way to, to show off the difference between where the space marine ends and where the, just the chaos mutation begins. I think these guys are gonna be get some lovely fodder for beautiful paint jobs and tons and tons of that sticky glue that people use to make like tendrils of blood. Oh, just slobber that stuff on everywhere. Oh, it would look so good. Good old Chaos Possessed. It's been, it's been a hot minute, but I'm glad that they got an update. But that wasn't even, that was like the tip of the iceberg. They showed off a lot of stuff. And next up was New Cultists. Which again, I should have should have seen this coming because the the model of the month right now for Warhammer stores is a Chaos Cultist 
from the Cultist of the Abyss box, which is actually currently the only thing that they sell with cultists in it. And these guys are great. They're definitely right around, right along the lines of the Abyssal Cultists. And I think they look good. It'll be, I can't wait to see this sprue because with cultists, they're a mass unit. And so it'll be very interesting to see what kind of options you get in the box to make sure that they all look a little different. Although they're cultists and they shouldn't really be that hard to kit bash and convert anyway. Just clip some arms here and there, some head swaps. But I think they look great and I think these will look great in mass. And after the cultists, Games Workshop really hit us with a new thing, which is cultist possessed, which is kind of an interesting idea. It's kind of hilarious that both of these things came out at the same time because you've got space marines and then you've got space marine possessed and now you have cultists and now you have cultist possessed. And I love the idea of the little cultist possessed running alongside the giant space marine possessed. And these guys are really, really fun too. I think I think they're gonna look really neat. I was wondering how these guys were gonna work, like, cause possessed are kind of like an elite strike unit. You might have one of them and run them around, but are the the cultist possessed gonna be a little bit more like you might have five, 10, 15 of them? Because they are in some pretty specific sculpts. They're good sculpts and I like them a lot, but I think it would be a little tricky to kit bash and convert these guys, depending on what we get in the kits. It could be something along the lines of the Gene Stealer called Aberrant Box, where the poses are kind of set, but the poses are done in such a way that each pose can be built two different ways. And I could see that as a really easy way to get a good solid 10 models out of the box. I hope we get something like that. But these guys are just fun. They're just, they're cultists who are a little melty. And I like that. But then the cultists, they got a little melty-er because we've got cultists, we've got cultists possessed, and then we have torments. And torments are weird. These are really weird. It's like, so space marines can turn into spawn or, po or possessed, or they can turn all the way into a demon prince. And this is kind of like a demon started to come out of a cultist, but cultists aren't cool enough to turn into full demon princes. Cause it's literally like a, a demon and a cultist got merged in the machine that uh, like David Cronenberg's the fly. Remember when that guy was turning into the fly because there was a fly in the pod with him when he tried to teleport. That looks like what these guys look like. It looks like a demon prince tried to come out of a cultist and it didn't quite work. They didn't, they only made it about halfway out and it's very macabre, very disgusting. And I kind of love it. Ah, oh, especially the fat crab thing. It's so weird. Oh, and you can see his like skin is stretched over the fat body. Oh, it's nasty. It's so much fun. Oh, I can't wait, I can't wait to see, cause this is kind of a brand new way to play Chaos Space Marines with all of these demon and possessed units. It'll be really interesting to see. And speaking of cultists, we have a cultist HQ option with Dark Commune. And these models are gorgeous. These models are lovely. They'll go beautifully with the Cultists of the Abyss models and the new cultists they just showed off. Showed off. And these models get me excited because this is a cultist HQ choice for Chaos Space Marines. And this means, cause cultists are a troop choice and this is a cultist HQ option. You, I hope that we can run a full cultist Chaos Space Marine army, a Chaos Space, a Chaos Space Marine army with no Chaos Space Marines. That Jimmy my jams, that flim my flams, that is really cool. And honestly, I could, I could see myself doing that. You get you get this dark commune as your HQ. You get a couple of big blobs of cultists, and then you have some of the weird possessed cultists or the torments running around. It feels very like Malifo. It's really it just seems fun. A proper cult. You know, get out of here, Gene Stealer cult. We got some some dark, just evil chaos worshiping cults running around. That would be such a cool space, chaos space marine army, a chaos space marine army with no chaos space marines. Cause I like the chaos space marines, but I already collect sp a space marine army. This would be a really fun way to have a chaos army that is very, very different. Ah, 
God, I the the little the torments are so weird. I love them. They're weird spidery legs. I absolutely love it. Also, just a fun kind of aside, but the torment with the gigantic fist and the uh, the demon head with the tall horns, it looks a lot like a Gundark from Star Wars. It just does. It's just what I, what comes to my mind. Uh, I, I can't wait. I can't wait for six months to go by. <clears throat> It'll probably take a little longer than that because who knows when these models are actually going to be available to purchase. Hopefully fairly soon because I think the Codex is coming out soon. But I can't wait to see these models in people's armies, see what people do with them, how they paint them, how they kitbash and convert them. These are going to be really cool. Chaos players are cool. Chaos players, chaos players are people who like Space Marines, but they want something that is Space Marines, but more interesting and more exciting. And I cannot wait to see what people do with these, how they introduce them into their armies. It's going to be fun times. And speaking of fun time for Chaos, that's not even the only Chaos model they showed off. They showed off a new Demon Prince. This fearsome Archfiend can be built in numerous ways, with different options to pay homage to each of the four Dark Gods, or Chaos Undivided. You'll note that he bears some of the marks of his former existence as a Chaos Space Marine, now ripped and twisted into a horrifying new form. This model... This model is dope. They just showed off a Demon Prince for Age of Sigmar, and that model... It was all right. It was perfectly fine. Nothing wrong with it, but it just didn't really get me going. It looked like a lot of the de of the demon models that I've seen STLs for or other companies make. This model is dope. I super love it. It harkens back to the old metal demon prints, and I love it. The, the demon prints that you could buy for a long time, which I painted that model too, it was a little derpy. I think it had to, the the Warhammer version of it had to make too many concessions for it to be available in 40K and the 40K one was held back because it had to be available for Fantasy 2. But this model, this model is 40K all the way and it looks really good. He's got his tactical rock, thank goodness. He's got a super cool sword. It looks like he's wearing Space Marine armor. The posing is really good. Sometimes, sometimes Games Workshop is not that great with the posing of larger figures, but this guy, he's got, he's got it where it counts. I love it. And the different chaos heads are really good. I can't, again, what's, what's kind of funny though, cause they didn't, they didn't pay their artists to paint this model five times to represent all the five chaos gods. And so they just snapped off the head and had them paint the heads and like, it almost looks like they blue tacked or photoshopped them into place. So it'll be interesting to see once once it gets out there, uh, how people paint up this model to look slaneshi or to look corny or to look nurgly or to look zinchi. That'll be, that'll be neat. I like the zinch head, just a weird bird, bird goose head coming out of this model. I love it. This model is absolutely dope. I, I'm collecting a Death Guard army right now, and I actually have the old fine cast Death Guard, uh, Death Guard Nurgle Demon Prince. And that model is great. I love that model because it looks really silly, but uh, I'd be I'd be excited to get this model for, for a Chaos Space Marine army. Maybe, maybe in a cult army, in a cultist Chaos Space Marine army, there can be one proper demon running the show and that demon is a demon prince. I just, I just like this model. This model is really, really cool. I love it. He's got rings all over his fingies because he's large and in charge. He needs he needs to be decked out. He needs to be dressed to the nines. Ah, he, need, he needs his bling. This model is dope. And they show off a couple of the alternate alternate pieces. What they don't show off, which I can't wait to see, is the wings, because this is going to have wing options. You got to have wings on your demon prince. And I cannot wait to see what that looks like. Ah. Man, Games Workshop, you're doing you're doing too good a job. This is actually really cool. Usually they release a model and it's like that, you know, you know, thumbs up, cool, whatever. But this stuff is actually fun and I think is gonna like change 40k. Like it's definitely gonna make Chaos Space Marines more interesting. I mean, Chaos, Chaos is an army that has kind of languished for a while, especially because it was one one grouping of miniatures that had to facilitate like five different armies. But now that they pulled out Death Guard, they pulled out Thousand Suns, 
and uh, presumably they will pull out Korn and Slanesh, uh, a proper kind of Chaos Warband army is emerging from this giant mush of Chaos, and I cannot wait to see it. Because Chaos is cool, but only the, only the Chaos superfans are the ones who've really kind of been the torchbearers up until now. But it's, it's cool. I like it. It's neat. It's fun. And so now that we've gotten the cool stuff out of the way, I guess we'll look at the squats. The squats got a new model, and it is the new squat trike, which squats famously had trikes. But the new trike is different, very, very different, but somehow still the same. I like this model a lot. I think it's really, really cool. I like this more than the generic, normal squat that they showed off earlier. This guy's got some more cool stuff going on. I like his pump action bolter. Uh, I like I like that the the engines or the exhaust or whatever anti-gravity device this this machine uses kind of looks a little bit like a Roomba. I think I think it's a neat model. It looks a lot like some of the technology from Fallout, like the vertebrates or or the eddies. It's kind of got those like curves and overlapping pieces of armor. I think it's really cool. I, I, uh, I'm I assuming that this is probably gonna be sold in like packs of two or packs of three to make a little squad. And it'd be fun to maybe have them like up off the ground and then maybe put some cotton balls underneath like it's kicking up dirt and having them all kind of at weird angles like they can really do some interesting drifts because it's anti-gravity, you know? You can you can do all sorts of fun stuff. But I think, I think this model is great. Uh, it'll be, I mean, they're, they're drip feeding us, they're drip feeding us little squats little by little. Really, really, I won't, I won't really know my true thoughts until it's all laid out and I can see the whole squat army. But everything they've shown off is pretty darn cool. I, I think people will like it. Uh, I don't know if I'll collect a squat army. Honestly, the chaos stuff got me way more jazzed. And there's, oh, there's already like four or five armies I want to collect. But, but the squats are cool. They're, they're slowly winning me over. I definitely, I, I say it all the time on the live streams, by the way, I stream every night from 9 to 10 p.m. Central, come hang out. I always say on the live streams that Games Workshop does not need more factions. They just need to, to properly support the factions that they have, because I want the game to be tight and, and concise and balanced. I don't want, you know, Space Marines to have 175 units in their codex and Necrons to have 40 and Dark Eldar to have 11. I, I would like everything to kind of be fairly balanced, but I think I think the squats will make a worthy addition, and it does seem like Games Workshop is working their way through fixing all of the armies and getting them all up to the same level. Also, another weird thing with the squats, and I, I don't know, I don't know if it's a problem or not, but how are they not just the Gene Stealer cult? Like, it kind of bothers me that on the back of this guy's trike, is uh, like a lunchbox and a, a shovel and like mining equipment. And on the back of all the Gene Stealer cult stuff is a lunchbox and a shovel and mining equipment. It just, it, make it different, make it different. Have them be not miners. I know it's like the dwarf thing, but if you've already, you already used it up on the Gene Stealer cult, just do something different. I mean, they obviously didn't, and that's fine, but uh, you gotta do something different. At least this model isn't Gene Stealer Cult Gray like the first model was. Gotta, why not do bright orange? No, no army they have right now is bright orange. That would have been fun. And it would have made them like, it would have made them look different. I think one of the most hilarious times in Games Workshop's history is when they came out with the Skitari Codex, and then they came out with the Adeptus Mechanicus Codex, and they obviously screwed up because they're the same army. <laughs> and literally, the, like, the cover art looked the same. The models were clearly painted all to be in the same army because they were all using the same colors with the same heraldry and the same transfer sheets. It was, I don't know if it was just a money grab or a screw up, if they didn't know that Adeptus Mechanicus was going to be ready so quickly after Skitari. But, I mean, clearly this is a different thing. The squats just happen to be miners, which is what the Gene Stealer cult happened to be too. But, I like this model. I don't want to be down on this model. It's a good model. I like it. Um, it'd be fun. It'd be a fun one to paint. It looks like this is going to be maybe like a sub-assembly city. Because I could see some of this stuff being a little tricky to pull off. Especially, 
especially the way that they painted it here. I mean, presumably all of those armor panels, I mean, it's giving me such retro vibes. I feel like the armor panels are all po probably made out of like Bakelite hard plastic and then everything else is metal. And so it would be hard to paint all of those a different color. I mean, I don't want to sit there with a brush all day and like this part's got to be metal and this part's got to be plastic and this part's got to be metal and this part's got to be plastic. I'd much rather have my metal pile here and my plastic pile here and then just airbrush them and then and then assemble it after the fact. But I like it. It's a good model and I'll, I'm excited to see what else comes out with the squats. Hopefully, hopefully this is setting up gravity train. It's, you know it's coming, right? They've got to do trains. How how would they not do trains? And getting back to my weird Skitari and Admech were two separate things. We're getting trains in Necromunda Ash Wastelands at like exactly the same time we're going to get trains for squats. It's just going to be, it's going to be that, you know, oh, remember in 2022 it was Games Workshop Year of the Train. It was just, it's just fun. It's just, it's just a, oh, an interesting, an interesting, an interesting company, that Games Workshop. But yeah, that was all of the new releases from Games Workshop. If I had to pick a favorite, boy, it's hard. I liked a lot of the stuff. I think it might have to be the Torments, though. Those things are macabre. They are super spooky, and I love them. But Games Workshop showed off another thing, a new show coming to Warhammer Plus. And when I saw that it was a prequel to Angels of Death, my eyeballs about rolled into the back of my skull. I thought that was the lamest thing I could ever think of. I mean, have prequels ever really worked? There's like two examples of prequels that are like, you know what? You nailed it. But I actually think Games Workshop, once I watched the trailer for Angels of Death prequel colon the next show, I was completely sold because it's a, it, it was my favorite character from Angels of Death because the Space Marines, the Space Marines are fun, but Space Marines are caricatures of the world of Warhammer where the ship captain was actually kind of a really interesting person. I mean, she's a regular human who's in charge of flying the Space Marines battle cruiser. It was, it's really cool. And the prequel is all about her. And I actually think that that is a really good idea. I mean, you take your best character that we didn't get to learn too much about and we find out about her history. And what's also fun in the trailer is clearly they went they went back to the drawing board on how they animate faces because you know the war um, Angels of Death if it had some flaws one of the flaws was that the faces were serviceable they weren't great but it looks like they've perfected faces and now going forward the human faces in the Angels of Death shows are going to be really good. I'm I'm actually excited for this show. I think it'll be really good. I think humans in 40k are always always make for the best stories. Every time I read the novels, it's all it's never the space marines who I really care about. It's always the humans. The stakes are so much higher for a human because a space marine, you know, a space marine it takes an entire army to take out a space marine. You don't get scared when there's orcs around the corner when there's a space marine who's your hero. But if there's one orc, every human in the room could go down. <laughs> and I actually I'm actually looking forward to it. What I would be looking forward to more is if there's a new Angels of Death show coming to Warhammer Plus, they put the old Angels of Death on YouTube. They'll never do it. They won't do it. But Games Workshop, you really should let people enjoy these shows. Uh, somebody left a comment on my Warhammer review video. That was genius. That, that um, Warhammer Plus should almost be treated like a lot of people's Patreons where if you, uh, you know, once the next year's content starts to roll out on Warhammer Plus, they put the previous year's, they start to put the previous year's content on YouTube. Genius. People get to watch the content. They get to get excited about it. It's out there in the world, but it's also pushing people right back to Warhammer TV if they want more. I think that's a brilliant idea. Games Workshop, please do it, or at least host it. If you don't want to lose out on a bunch of revenue going to Google, you could at least host it on your own free video hosting platform. Let people watch this stuff because I would love to have long discussions with about Angels of Death, Hammer and Bolter, Louise's painting classes. I would love to, to get to talk about those and experience those with other people, but I don't get to because I don't know anybody with a subscription. I don't, I don't know if anybody should get a subscription. So, meh. But it was, it was a cool trailer. I, I'm looking forward to the show. It's gonna be fine. Everything's fine. Squats are cool. 
<laughs> but I have to, I have to, I have to tip my cap to Games Workshop a little bit because I, I wasn't looking forward to the Warhammer special events, weekly, whatever. I wasn't looking forward to it at all, but it is pretty cool. I'm excited to see what comes out with next. I love the chaos stuff they showed off. It's, it's nice. It was a good time. But in other Warhammer news, Warhammer stuff that really jingled my bells, flimmed my flams, buttered my toasts, I saw Dr. Rhino, Matt. He is a Twitch paint streamer, and he painted an incredibly cool, badass, this is a battle army, the Order of the Iron Maidens. A super cool punk rock Sisters of Battle army. And this, I got to see this army in person at Adepticon. It is, it is really, really cool. I love stuff like this. I love when people go all out, when people do really interesting kit bashes and conversions. I just think it's so cool. I, I always think to myself that I want to do stuff like this, but then I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to convert the heck out of this. I'm going to make it really, really cool. I'm going to do a head swap. And then that's the extent, and that's the whole extent of my kit bash. But this is an entire army. I think it's 2,000 or 3,000 points of Sisters of Battle who are, every single one has been completely customized. It's like a half of a sister model, how half of a Necromunda Escher model with, with custom rock and roll guitars that have bolters glued underneath them. It is brilliant. It's hilarious. It's amazing. They eat, they all have different like color accents. They all have wonderful, crazy rainbow haircuts. The basing is top notch. It is a really, really fun army. I absolutely am in love with it. It's just neat. Morgan Vall as like the ringleader with the super hot torch stabbing into a heretic. And she's flanked by a whole bunch of, of the regular battle suit nuns who have their faces covered with extra armor plating. And it's not made clear exactly how they can see, but I think that that is perfectly fine. This is a really, really cool army. Unbelievable amounts of time, energy, and thought went into this. And I, it, I super jive with it. It is really, really cool. Ah, I mean, you take, you take this army anywhere, you're gonna turn heads. People are gonna be like, damn, that is, so cool. I feel like there's it's almost there's almost like two spectrums of really cool kit bashed armies. There's armies, you know, because there's classic Games Workshop box art, and then there's like really cool grim dark. That actually looks like what Warhammer probably really, really looks like in real life. But then you can kind of go the other way with it, where you got like Hello Kitty Marines, Buzz Lightyear Marines, and Punk Rock Sisters of Battle. And those armies are equally cool, but in a completely different way. And I super love this army. It is very, very cool. Dr. Rhino, he's a fun guy. He streams on Twitch from six to nine Mondays and Fridays. Go check him out and ask him about his punk rock sisters army. I'm sure he'd love to talk about it. It is some cool, cool stuff. Ah, what? What a week. What a fun week for new, interesting, cool stuff in the Warhammer universe. And speaking of cool stuff from the Warhammer universe, if you like the videos we make, the best way to support us is over on Patreon. Over there, you get access to even more Eons of Battle with the weekly live hobby hangout, tons of super cool terrain STLs, behind the scenes, hobby hangouts, and voting on what models I paint live here on YouTube. By the way, I live stream painting on YouTube every night from 9 to 10 p.m. Central, come hang out. And we also have merch, like this super, super duper comfy sweater. Link in the description. But that is what I spent the week looking at. It was, it's been a really, really cool week for Warhammer and thanks for watching.